Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials moving from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 18, or 11 in the subsection of Maxwell's equations. So specifically in this video, I'm going to show you how to derive the boundary conditions for the electric field. And these are very important for things like the index of refraction and so on. So as normal, the place we start is with Maxwell's equations. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the electrostatic Maxwell's equations. So these are going to be for electrostatic electrostatics. Now in electrostatics uh, Gauss's law for electric fields doesn't change but Faraday's law does change because the we don't have the time rate of change in the magnetic field so the electric field in electrostatics does in fact not curl. So another way of writing this as follows we could have the closed surface integral of e dot dA and that's equal to the, char the charge enclosed over epsilon zero. Note of course this is, is clearly a double integral but I find it easier to write it in this, this, particular, fa uh, this particular fashion. And we could also go using Stokes theorem or excuse me by using the divergence theorem we can then go from Faraday's law bear with me now and we can rewrite it in this term so we get the closed line integral of e dot dl is equal to zero in electro electrostatics. So in order to apply Gauss's law for electrostatics, what we need to do is, uh, I suppose, come up with a surface. So I'm not gonna really discuss how it's applied, but what we do is as follows. Let's say we have a boundary like this. This is, a, this is our boundary and there's electric, an electric field propagating through this. Okay, so let's say the field is going from the bottom to the top like that. So this is E up and this is the electric field down. Now how we apply Gauss's law for electric fields is we pick a surface and the reason we pick a surface is if you look here we're talking about a closed surface integral is equal to charge enclosed over epsilon zero. So there are three types of surfaces that you can pick if you're talking about Gauss's law. You can think of a pillbox, a, a sphere, or a cylinder. Now I'm going to tell you that in order to, uh, to get the electrostatic boundary conditions we use a Gaussian pillbox. So what we do is come up with a surface which is just straddling the, uh, uh, come up with our own surface which is straddling the surface we're looking to analyze. So I'm going to draw my Gaussian pillbox and my, my drawings aren't usually great so we'll try this. So this is the pillbox on top and of course the pillbox is, is below as well. Now the thickness of the pillbox which I'm colouring in is, is negligible, it's very very small. It's negligible in comparison with, with the, length, uh, the length and the width of the pillbox. Alright, so let's apply Gauss's law in integral form to this. Alright, so first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite Gauss's law by saying it's a closed surface integral of e dot dA. That's fine, but I'm going to rewrite the charge because the charge really is an integral as well and we can rewrite it as 1 over epsilon 0 times the charge density integrated over the volume. I'm going to say tau is for a volume, okay? And this is integrated over volume. So this of course is a triple integral. So what happens here, right? We can, uh, let's, let's, I suppose, let's see if we can calculate this. Now in the limit where the width of the, or the, me, the thickness of our pillbox is very small, if you look closely, what we really get is the magnitude of the electric field up minus the, the perpendicular to the, to the surface, of course, and the, minus the magnitude of the electric field down. Because what we really have is a flux, we have a flow. So the net flow would be the amount going up minus the amount going down, the amount in versus the amount out. And of course, you need to multiply this by the area. So that gives us the left hand side of the uh, the, the left hand side of the equation. Now we can also be we're, we're actually talking about so while rho is for a char a volume charge density, we're really only talking about an area. So if we're talking about an area, you use the area charge density sigma. So if you look at this, what we're going to have is sigma over epsilon zero. Or find my cursor. So we have sigma over epsilon zero. Excuse me. That's rho I was drawing there. So sigma over epsilon zero 
and multiply this by the area also because it'll go from a volume uh, down to down to a surface so of course we're going to cancel the area and we find the electrostatic boundary condition for the perpendicular component is that e perpendicular going up minus e perpendicular going down is discontinuous by amount sigma that's that's a delta sigma over epsilon zero so the perpendicular component of the electric field is discontinuous here by an amount sigma over epsilon zero where there is charge flowing along your uh, your surface okay so that is the perpendicular component of the electric field now we'd like to work out what it is on uh, how what the boundary conditions are for the tangential component so once again here's our surface with the electric field going through it so this time what we're going to do is we're going to use Faraday's law in integral form for electrostatics. So you need to come up with a line integral. So let's say I pick my line and I draw it as, as a rectangle like this. Now in the limit, I can make the, the, we'll say the width of this, I can make it approach zero. So the width is going to get very small. So if we look at the line integral, all we're going to have is the, uh, the electric field parallel going up we'll say minus the electric field parallel going down and by the by the by Maxwell's equations that's equal to zero so that means that the electric field parallel to the to the boundary going up is equal to the electric field parallel going down in other words it is a continu the electric field is continuous parallel to the to the to the boundary so to say it once more, we have the perpendicular electric field up is discontinuous when it goes from down at the up below your surface to above your surface by amount sigma over epsilon zero, but the, the tangential component is in fact continuous. So they are the electrostatic the electrostatic boundary conditions. And because electric charges move so quickly when an electric field is applied, or electrodynamic field is applied, uh, these, these also hold for electrodynamics. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment on the comments box below.